welcome to High Footy Fire, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news linked towards the singularity and high mind stuff as well. I am Nathan Waters. I'm Tristan Grace. And welcome. Yay, High Footy Five. God, I can't open the you can't open beer. Yeah, you meant to open it during the intro. That would have been epic. Like yeah, stylish. cheers. And Grab a beer, everyone. On. Yeah. Sunny. You should do that. That would work well. I could write two with my new lovely... But then they can't see our pretty eyes. Well, yeah. It is a pity. I know that's why you tune in. I've, I've seen a fan mail. Quite frankly, you should stop. Especially you, Justin. That's creepy. Mm. Anyway. What do we got this week? Got Facebook it. assembling a global team of diplomats. Hells yeah, I've got the first quantum computer has actually been sold. Robots develop language to talk to each other. And I've got a plane that I want to buy. <laughs> and we're going to do Hive AI as well. We're going to do that to start with. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's, do, it, let's do Hive AI to start with. Let's do the singularity topic first. Yeah, okay. Why not? Then wait, wait, some of the topic. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, so we'll go briefly through that, then we'll do single own topic as well. Well, this way, people, uh, I don't, or we should, should we make them, there's only like, there's two guys. Okay, let's go those two. Or should we make them wait till the end? No, 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 they can watch oh, it now. Because cool. okay. they're awesome people, and we love you. Okay. We do. So, so I'll, read the, I'll read this one. Um, yes. So, Log Me In Vids, uh, VD says, In the near future, a lot of people might become ent- mentally ill. Technology will grow so fast that we will feel alienated from our reality, a social and religious collapse will follow and will cause terrorism, suicide, and a mass, massive extinction. Extinction. I'm sometimes afraid of the future. Fuck, that's dark. <laughs> that's really dark. It's a good start to the episode. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't say that um, I, I disagree with that too much. Um, I, I, I definitely think it's a possibility. Well, I, I, get, I get that feeling now, actually, um, already, in a sense. It's probably just because I don't exercise enough or eat well. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm just saying, but... Uh, uh, you get into that daily grind of like you wake up and like within within probably about half an hour yeah, right. I'm already yeah. on the computer I'm plugged in yeah. often oftentimes headphones on so it's like literally plugged in and then you're just going away and you and you're there for like uh, and I've been I I'm still on a fucking computer yeah I know we're still looking at most of my waking day is on a fucking computer in front of a screen mm. trying to find and collaborate information and do all this pattern recognition and processing. Yeah. My, with my brain, getting information in, processing and putting it back out and trying to make a difference. And, oh, it's just tiring. It's really, really tiring. Yeah. I've got to get out and like kick something. Yeah, exactly. Um, Do you get that feeling? I, I get or that feeling just, like yeah. massively. Um, yeah, so we wake up every day, we're seated, we're already, we're already plugged in permanently. I mean, it's only going to continue I was, I actually, I actually, I was going to post this update. To, oh, actually, I did it at the top, really? That was my, yeah. that was my, my top comment. Oh, really? That's my one. Yeah, because I was related to that. I was like, oh man, we're freaking already in the Matrix right now. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like the, the book version, which apparently I haven't yeah. read. Because yeah. we're already doing that same thing. Like, okay, I may as well read it. just to... So, <laughs> uh, we wake up every day and within an hour, we, we usually see it at the computer, plugged in and ready to work or play, which is essentially the same thing. You're still getting information and then yeah, yeah, playing precious. online. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are voluntarily teaching the machine all of our knowledge and it is gradually compiling it all, which is very awesome. But in our 9 to 5 jobs and internet playtime, we just receive information, our brains process it, and we send it back out. Hmm. That's our whole job where, where our brains are computer processes. Do you think that'll lead to social collapse? or do you th- do you, I mean, can that be healthy? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, it's what people are doing the majority of the That's time what now. Do. Yeah. That's what a 9 to 5 job now is. You sit in front of a computer and you click buttons and push hmm. things to make stuff happen. That's what we do with everything. That's that's what everyone does. And for fun, you get in front of a computer too. And they're the most high-paid jobs as well. Yeah, true. Society favors that. Yeah, I think it, I think it's a good well. thing. I think it's just we need a, a more of a work a balance, mm. work-life balance, but <coughs> like a offline online balance. Yeah, but I think it'll be fine once we get some more kind of augmented reality and we can like different interfaces. This interface is very like prone to. It's very primitive. Sitting down and I, like my back's like I'm constantly lean, leaning over, even though I've got a 24 inch monitor. It's like, yeah, the words are small. I think I'm losing my vision. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I, I must have think like the, the the collapse and all of that. I, I mean, I definitely think that's possible with everyone getting online. But then again, with the old the amount of sharing and the amount of feedback that we get, that may not get to a collapse. But then we may ignore something like you know really serious, like you know running out of oil. Huh. Yeah. We're going to do an episode on that, won't we? Yeah, we should do Thinking that. Thinking about it. So we should just do an episode yeah, about it. It's very We're always talking about the positives of it. Let's do it next week, like the episode. No, we're, we're always talking about the negatives. Oh, well, yeah. We've, we've been so massively negative lately. I don't think oh. we've had very many positives. Well, we've had lots of positives, but it's always just the, the end games are very, well, humans well, die, yeah. but that's not the 
Well, there's nah. always there's always a 50-50, like, oh, shit. Like, we, we try to get both sides of the story, I guess. Yeah, exactly. It's just the bad side <laughs> is very bad, and the good side is very good. Yeah, it's great. So people tend to remember the bad side more. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, let's do one more before we get on the stories. Yep. Uh, sure, we'll do this one here, which is by Zipalog. Okay, it would be interesting to hear what you guys have to say about brain hacking. With high-tech devices becoming cheaper and more accessible, an underground subculture will emerge, if not already. Much like psychonauts, but more tech-savvy. Already students are experimenting with cognitive-enhancing smart drugs, especially in Europe and the United States. Example, brainwave instead of coffee. Like Adderall. Adderall's a really big one, especially over in the States. Really want to try and get it here. I can't get Adderall. <laughs> if anyone knows where I can get Adderall, please. Send us, uh, send us some Adderall. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Uh, Adderall's a, it's an ADHD medication. It's kind of, kind of like considered a smart drug. They, they use it a lot. Is it like heroin? I heard it's like hel- heroin, isn't it? No, amphetamines. Isn't that why you want it? No, no, no. It's like, it's like, it's, it's an amphetamine. <laughs> oh, it's an, okay. It focuses you like really crazy. Um, if you okay. focus on a task, you just go on it. Nothing like heroin. That's, no, God, that's not a smart drug. I'm fucking with you, man. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Like, Jesus, okay. Like, no, I, I, after some hard shit. I, I agree with this, with the, the brain hacking thing. This is actually something I don't think we've spoken about too much. But we don't I, I, talk I, about that, when we? Yeah, we were. Cause, yeah, as, as um, no, what's that else? Did you get ready to talk about? No, but we were going to We were going to do it. We'll, we'll do it as, a, as another one. But I'd actually like to look more into brain hacking and actually make that a, a topic. Because we haven't spoken about it too much, like, especially when you get into the whole augmentations yeah. uh, type stuff. Because there's that other you know, singularity of just enhancing your own intelligence biologically and putting it on. I like the I like the idea of putting uh, saying that we'll eventually just program humans from scratch. Yeah, oh definitely. The people don't like that idea at all. <laughs> you say that to them, they're like, they yeah, see, are. yeah, oh, you know, I had a nice kid there. Would you like me to program them into whoever you want them yeah. to be? Like, ah. I know, I know I've yeah. said it a million times before, but that's the death of the human species is when every bit of information they've ever had is recorded, and so then you can actually predict everything that's coming out. Yeah, in the machine. If you want to help us make that system? Call yeah, us. please do. <laughs> Call one eight hundred. Kill all humans. <laughs> it's an enhancement. It's it not is. A, it is. It's an enhancement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get on to the stories. And uh, please post some stuff on um, Hive AI. Any ideas you have? Anything you think that's uh, we're gonna do that every week. Like, yeah, right at the start. So you we can... might make it a little bit shorter, and we'll do it like a quick thing or something. But it should be good. So if you want to make like really horrible usernames, we will be forced to read them out. Yeah, it's and most probably we'll pick policy. them to actually read out. So. Yeah. The more horrible, the better. Mm-hmm. Uh, except not syphilis, because... <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? Just saying an internet. Just... It's not even like a... I don't even know how that joke flows. <laughs> okay. Who's doing which she rubs the cream on? <laughs> That's really bad, you know. You shouldn't leave your, like, your door open. Oh, God. <laughs> Um, do you want to start? No, you're, you're it's not even up. witty. I know, it's, it's just, just mean. Nothing. It's just mean. Um, okay. I'm going to send this to everyone to make sure they read that. Read it, watch it. What you having syphilis? No, <laughs> what you saying? It's just like what you horrible, horrible STD joke. stuff, yeah. <laughs> wow. Anyway, say your story. Uh, okay, first thing first. Uh, D-Wave has actually produced a 128 qubit uh, quantum computer and they've sold it to Lockheed Martin. Now, before going ahead with this, I want to like preface it by that it's not what you traditionally think of a quantum computer. It can't crack all these amazing codes. It's not even 128 qubits. It's only around 8 qubits. Um, qubit. Why, qubit. why are they lying then? They're not. They're exaggerating the truth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 really? It's just a black box filled with yeah. sand? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> just with another computer. I, I just start getting into hard. all of the details with it. Um, there's been a lot of posts about it. I'm sure you guys have probably heard. Um... But it does get very technical because, I mean, we're talking about quantum mechanics. and Explain again, to us not quantum mechanics. Oh, sure. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> quantum mechanics is magic. One and a both. Yeah, pretty much. Because if you had a proper, com- a, pro- a proper quantum computer, especially with all, um, like, you know, um, 512 encryption and all of that, you could actually, with it, enough qubits, you can just quickly go through and it automatically finds the right answer. I know I'm butchering it, so please don't correct me. Well, do correct me. I know I'm very much wrong, but... Yeah. It's kind of the, the essence, but it's not really doing that. It's doing the idea of there's this one program or this one thing that it can do a lot faster than another one. And I don't know what it is because I don't have my notes here. It was stupid. I've just got the article. Should have had my notes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I think that's really great that, I mean, it has actually started and people talking about it. What I have managed to get out of all the talking around that, yes, it is a quantum computer and yes, it is, it is beginning. 
Um, cool. So that, that's why I really well, like it. I like that idea that it's just it's 8 bit, because I mean, hmm. normal computers obviously started at 8 bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They had to start somewhere. And that's it. That, like, this is just beginning. It, it's not a pure quantum computer, but what everyone's been saying, or a lot of the positive people are saying that, hey, it's a beginning. It's an actual step up. And so we're actually starting to get I mean, people are always talking about quantum computers, so yay! <laughs> Uh, definitely check it out, it, especially if you go to Quora. Quora's had a lot of discussion about this. Very well, so, Lockheed Martin just got hacked as well. So. Yeah, you were saying. I wonder if that's about that, because what's the date there? 27th. 27th. This one is the 30th. Yeah, it could be. So, it might have been around the same time. Yeah. I don't know if they have it though. They, they, this is probably just an announcement that they're going to buy it, maybe. Yeah. But then again, Lockheed Martin, they do all the military weapons yeah, yeah, stuff, oh, oh, don't yeah. they? They're awesome. Well. They're no, no, no. <laughs> they're interesting. Their business they kill is, people. Their so. business is killing people, basically. Yeah. yeah. Fun. Um, anyway, so that's all I wanted to say is that I think the quantum computing race is a uh, beginning. Yep. Hopefully, I'm going to try and learn a little bit more about this. Cool. Anyway. Someone needs to make like a layman's video of like, this is what a quantum computer does. Well, see, then you end up with crap like, what the bleep do we know? That's just pseudoscience sh ah. bullshit. Well, maybe like. Do like a good a, one, a Carl Sagan type. Yes, yeah, like a, a, a series, like a three-part series with you know the forty-minute yeah. episodes each, where they guide you into the scientific principles and foundations you need to know to understand what they're going to tell you next, and then they. Just as an aside, a quick aside, like I've been watching a lot of space documentaries recently. They're really bad. A lot of the recent ones are just terrible. Because they, well, they, they're they, trying to appeal to the. Oh, I know. They just go over the same things again and again. Mm. Like, oh, come on. Anyway, you. Okay, uh, Facebook to assemble a global team of diplomats. You know, a lot of people have said before how, like, oh, Facebook has so many people, they're like a country. That it's was like, you! Well, it wasn't me specifically. It was, it was just you. Many, you are, many have been saying this. <laughs> Anywho, what they're going to do is... Uh, they're creating, hiring a network of ambassadors from India to Ireland. Why, why did you make me read that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, blame the computer. India to Ireland. Yeah. Okay. I'm guessing that means around the world. Uh, so they're going to... Um, hmm. uh, what they're going to do is they're actually going to monitor the, the local political landscape and act as multilingual, TV-friendly communicators in countries and for cultures that, in many cases, have very different values and laws about privacy and personal communication. I don't know what that means. So it sounds like... Sounds like... They basically are going to get ambassadors for each sort of country. So say, like, an Australian ambassador for Facebook... And they're kind of going to just, you know, um, kind of stick up for the Facebook they're Australian, lobbyists. essentially. They're lo like they're obviously that's what Facebook's ulterior motive is is to yeah. is to lobby the government to keep everything kind of open and you know try to quell any privacy laws and try to yeah uh, kind of trying to like communicate with the, the Australian type or whatever country Facebook communities and actually say. Yeah. Hey, wouldn't you want it open? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or if say you know people, the governments are trying to censor them, or blah blah blah, they can step in and they can kind of hell's yeah. They can kind of ask ask the voice of the say 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 like um, what's a, what's a horrible country for censorship? Like say Facebook in North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're going to be putting anyone. It's a good, in North it's Korea. A good example. <laughs> so if you know the North Korean government's like no, we're going to shut down Facebook, or we're going to censor you, or we're going to stop you from posting mm. this. The North Korean ambassador for Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> He'd be like, Kim Jong Il, no. Bad, Bad Kim Jong Il. <laughs> Duh. Mm. So, yeah, that's pretty I cool. Like that. um, the only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is that it's Facebook. I would prefer if it was, say, just like an internet ambassador or something like, you know, if. So, something but like Facebook that. is the internet. Yeah, well, it's coming to that point. But it's very. I don't know, it's, it's all for... I, I still don't trust Facebook, even though that building up a whole thing around getting people to use Facebook as much as possible, I'm still very iffy about their motivations. That's because they're not open enough. No, that's it. But I think if they opened up and told people what they knew about them, I don't think they'd like it. No. <laughs> like, what? It's like Google. Like, yeah. If Google came out and said, hey, this is how much we know about you based on some little, I mean, little yeah. piece of research we've been doing, people would be like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. You know more about me than anyone ever does, Yeah. including myself. And well, there's a really cool um, thing where we were talking about it before about uh, that Intel have released uh, this exhibit that actually pulls in all of your Facebook details and data and actually makes it an exhibit based on your life. Uh, which is really really cool. So uh, definitely it's check it, out that, that. I don't know why more people aren't doing that because when you click like that. when you click like connect with Facebook and say allow, Receive. you can essentially allow anything you have on Facebook to just be yeah. shared. Yeah. And they can then use that data to do whatever they want. 
Yeah. Uh, inter- oh, interesting one. Um, because we, we, we'll, I was talking about um, I'm trying to look for ways to, like find out the influences on Facebook easily without knowing hardcore maths and crazy algorithm shit. Um, I thought you know those ones where uh, it just had a current craze recently where you rank your friends. So you say connect with Facebook and it gives you a rank of like who are your top friends, who are the ones you interact with most. Mm. And I thought, man. Those people, if they compile all those things and get everyone to do it because it's viral, because people are like, ha ha ha, I wonder where I stand. I wonder where my friends are, because people are fucking stupid. Um, sorry, friends that did that. Um, <laughs> but but if, you compile, if you compile all of them together and, and aggregate them, you can actually just work out who the influencers are. It's quite easy. You say, he's yeah. the top person out of these people's friends, he's the top people out of these people's friends. Yeah, hey, exactly. Between you and me, here's the person that we listen to most. Yeah. I'll control that person, I'll like give them a discount or some stupid little thing to like push out my message really subtly. And they'll do that and then boom, we're now influenced by that and we will go by that. We you you because you control the social influencers, you control the whole network. It's exactly. Very simple. Well I wonder if these uh, Facebook diplomats will have access to everyone's Facebook profile if they could actually know who to target to actually get things done. Because say that they're um, trying to target, you know, specific people to keep Dude, things open. They, they could, they've got access to everything. They could enable and manipulate political change. Mm. Policy they really change. could. Really easily. If they, the, I mean, if all the diplomats are sharing everything on there. Well, I mean, diplomats, all the politicians and all of the because, local stuff. Because what yeah. you do, you, you have, say you have an issue, you then polarize it. So you have two sides. That's the best way to create, like, yeah. it, whether it's fake or not. And then they just... Yeah, yeah, they can just find the influencers in, say, Australia and say, hey, influencers, you know, or just feed them information somehow. Yeah. Really solely, though. That's the issue. Well, they could, yeah, they, these guys could be very dangerous, especially if they have total access to everything that we share on Facebook, because th- these guys could become very powerful within the political system or any, any place that they actually work if they have total unfettered access to everything on Facebook. Well, if they're working at Facebook, I'm sure they would. Yeah. To some degree. But, I mean, not when it's their entire job to actually influence the country. I mean, that's what a diplomat does, is influence the country. <laughs> oh, with the whole power of Facebook behind me. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. And they'll make it seem like, the, they can make it seem like the community wants that change. But it's not, how it's do you know if cherry it's... Pick. <laughs> how do you know if, yeah, how do you know if it's the community actually wanting that, or if it's their influencing community to say they want that, or... <laughs> Fun times ahead. I indeed. We should talk more about Facebook. We haven't spoken about Facebook for a while, I don't think. Yeah. We've gone in depth. Um... Anyway, next one. This is a happy one. Yay! <laughs> There's a plane. Um, well, I want to talk about this E Genius electric plane. That's a nice name for a plane. I know E Genius. I'm gonna fly my E Genius. Bizarre. Mm. Uh, now it's actually got backing by Airbus, but get this. I'm gonna throw some stats at you. It can actually. Its cruising speed is 160 k's an hour, mm. but it can actually travel up to 235 k's an hour. Holy shit. And the distance it can travel on one charge is 400 kilometers. So that's like insane for a that's totally for electric um, airplane, and it carries two people. How many wings does it have? Two. Uh, oh, well, wow. no, six, because it's got the the fins. Okay. So that's kind of cool. What kind of uh, fucking crazy ass batteries is this using? I have no idea. It's insane. And it's actually being backed by Airbus. You know, the giant ass um, airplanes and stuff. <laughs> giant ass airplanes, yeah. Um, but it's it's insane. I'm, I'm a big fan know. of this. I, I can't wait for this actually, you know, to come on the market or something. I mean, people have been saying, like, you know, it's a glorified um, glider. But still, I mean, the fact that it can actually be, take off and land. I, I would love to be able to fly 400Ks, like, on a weekend. Just cruise down just, there just and just, you know, just cruise along. Yeah. I don't care about, you know, traveling somewhere. I mean, Australia, 400 k doesn't really get you anywhere, but... Yeah. Fuck, that'd be just fun to fly around. I might go to Sydney and back. Yay. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I love that this is actually coming ahead, and the fact it's backed by Airbus, and it, it's looking like it might have a bit more traction than that crappy air car. Do you remember the air car? Does, is that the one that had, like, a parachute built in and stuff? Or? It, it had four fans, and it was, like, on all those, like, science shows, like, you know, when you were a kid, saying, this will be the future of the air car. It's amazing. <laughs> And it was, right. it was red, and it was really lame. Um, I still want to know what batteries I was using, because like, when uh, you told me about this, I was like, what's, yeah. the, what's the charge on UAVs now? It's like 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, good point. And if this can travel two people, our idea of like, oh man, UAV transportation, automated yeah. UAV transportation from town to town would be freaking that awesome. That would be great. I mean, you just load it up, you just take it when you want. How far is 400Ks? That's like... 400Ks is really far. That's like, you could go pretty much up, from, up and down the New South Wales coast, couldn't you? Sydney yeah, to say bit. Sydney to down to mm, no, you might be pushing it. Sydney to down, but anyway, it's fine basically. Yeah. Um. So yeah, could be pretty cool. I don't know. Uh, definitely. Uh, I'm 
I don't know. There's no site for it. Well, there is a site and stuff, but you can't like you know put reservations for it. But I'd really like to do that. You know, get get a get a little bit of money and buy a plane that you fly on the weekends. Yay! We should buy like a community plane. Yeah. Just get like a hundred of us together and yeah, just pitch in money. Why you get your own plane? plane? Just buy a plane to the local town yeah, and like just get it on the like plane. people need their own plane. No. It's like they even need their own car. Like, yeah, you just go and fly it for fun. Now you have to get a pilot's license, and oh, that's really expensive. If any of you guys have ever looked into getting a pilot's license. Fucking takes a long time and with a lot of money. Like air, airplane lessons aren't cheap. Mm. That's, yeah. another, that's another topic we could talk about. It's like um, <laughs> sharp. <shut up>. What? <laughs> Alright, I had a funny picture. Okay. Like uh, the sharing physical kind of possessions and items. Yeah, yeah. Remember, uh, like sharing a plane, sharing a car. Like why do you? Why does everyone have to have their own thing? Why does everyone have to have their own computer, their own laptop? Yeah, own exactly. We're talking about that before. Like I should just be able to walk up to anyone's screen device like computer laptop mm. phone blah 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 it instantly recognizes me when mm -hmm. i log in and then it's just got my exact screen my exact, exactly my exact os my exact settings my exact well anyway yeah board. anywhere you go like and, and that'll happen in the next few years i'm, I'm pretty certain sure, someone will yeah. crack it i mean even i think windows 8 was talking a little bit about it um just yeah any screen you use is always you you're always interacting with yeah. the same version no because it's it all it's all off-site and, and even safe state so like i've got yeah. this website up now if i if I travel overseas somewhere or even and pick up some random device, yeah, it should it load should up that screen exactly the and same. Like, sweet, cool. Yeah. Or oh, good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, next story. Robots develop language to talk to each other. This Ooh. is actually pretty awesome. Uh, I'm not sure where it would go to, but pretty awesome. So they got these basic robots that are the ones that kind of navigate a maze on little wheels and their little tiny ones. Yeah. But uh, what they've actually been doing is... Um, at random, lo uh, when they get to certain locations, they emit random sounds, like just completely random sounds. <laughs> but what they do is actually share those sounds with each other, or at least yeah. they, each other robot can hear what that, uh, that particular robot said. And what they're starting to do is they're kind of t starting to develop their own lexicon, their own language. Hell <laughs> yeah! Because they kind of come to, a, uh, they eventually come to a consensus that oh, this, <clears throat> this beat yeah, yeah, means yeah. this. It'd be like it'd be like how we keep saying like ha ha ha, the word cat means nothing. It's just enough people say cat we all understand that in the word cat means this yeah. abstract concept so they're kind of doing a similar thing with based on location because there's not really other any other context to robots yeah. and maze yeah well yeah but based on location they can actually bleep out a random sound completely random and they're essentially learning like this is completely unaided no humans yeah. are saying this beep at this point means this they've just said robots are just gone beep at this point everyone else has heard them and they're trying to find it and they've slightly worked out where they are so in that sense they can actually find each other based on sound yeah because they'll say they'll get to a certain point they'll bleep and then everyone will know because there's a consensus that's formed amongst them as more things actually go there and do another sense. bleep and then they yeah they organise they're a self-organising system yeah and so I'd love for people to be like I don't know I think the issue is yeah this, there's no context in this arrangement because it's a maze and location yeah yeah it's like amazing. I wonder how you teach robots the context of like the abstract concept of a cat or the abstract concept of love <laughs> I want to teach a robot to love. <laughs> that is my dream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's... Well, that, that kind of leads on to the singularity topic. Yeah. Uh, what was that? The self-organizing systems. Self-organizing systems, that one. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay, hi! Okay, so, let's talk about self-organizing systems. Nathan, what is a self-organizing system? Well, it's... I'm glad you asked, Tristan Grace. Why, right, thank you. A self-organizing system is a system that organizes by itself. Uh -huh. Void of any top-down control or influence. Uh -huh. The individual nodes in the network interact with each other. Oh, God. To form. <laughs> to form. It's it gone too long. <laughs> it's self-organizing. They do stuff. <laughs> they do stuff. Fair enough. Define, they create, define, create complexity, kind of, from a more basic basic. Yeah, that's because I was about to say define organized. Yeah, organized doesn't mean anything really. Yeah, well, that's true as well. You, you boil it's all down. Series of inputs and outputs and yeah, exactly. And predefined or co-defined patterns. Yeah, and so I guess the re reason I want to talk about it, like especially in regards to you know what the singularity is and what hive minds are. I mean, they're just self-organizing systems. There's no one dictating that yeah. I will now make a singularity. I will now make a hive mind. They just emerge. Yeah. And, I don't know, what, what does that even mean? <laughs> like, that's just a little bit ridiculous when you start looking at it, because we're within that self-organizing system. 
Yeah, that's what I was saying before. Um, the internet is essentially a self-organizing system, but it's it's kind of hard to recognize because you still see it as like, oh no, that's that website isn't kind of evolving or something. It's just um, people are making decisions behind the scenes and saying this goes yeah. here and that goes there, which in a sense is true. Yeah. But I mean, you look back at like the whole evolution of the web, and it, it you know ignore that kind of component of there have been individual. No, actually, no. There have been individuals that have all said. Hey, this should look this way. This should do this. This should do this way. And you look back at like the websites in the '90s or early mm. 2000s and how shit they looked yeah. compared to how kind of better they look now. Yeah. <laughs> We're arguing about the term "better" before, yeah. Um, What's well, kind of just a self organization Exactly. Well, talk about like uh, I, I guess in the um, in regards to the the robots actually communicating with each other and doing it better. We could apply that science same type of like analysis on ourselves and actual websites. I kind of like that. Yeah. And say things like Facebook and Twitter and well Google obviously Google. Why am I saying Facebook and Twitter? Um, have been a way that they've all gone. Oh yes, that is a great way to organize, and they've created that language going through. That Google is a great way to actually start organizing through that regard. Then Facebook was another way to organize going through, and it's the kind of like the websites there and everything online was developing its language by just trying out different things. And Google tried out this thing and was like, oh, that's a really cool way to do it. So they all jump onto that. Yeah. Well, I guess you you could put it in that sense if you um. I mean, Facebook and Google and stuff like that are popular because of the mass influence they have because a whole bunch of people use them. Yeah. And if they put out a feature or some kind of new thing that the group says no and just doesn't like, yeah. then there's your kind of evolutionary feedback mechanism and people yeah. will just say no. Yeah, exactly. A bit like... Uh, Alta Vista. <laughs> I, I, I was, I was going to say like Facebook Beacon, but that was... That was just I a... Don't know. That was just a... Yeah. That was just a media hype type thing. But well, it, when you start looking at all the other startups and things, I mean, the whole point of, say, getting any bit of information out here, I mean, the point of this podcast and stuff is to try and get people to actually, like, you know, e even look at the message and say, and to incorporate that within the system, incorporate that into yeah. that. So We're trying, to, we're trying to influence each other. Yeah, that, that's it. It's, it's all trying to organize. Like, if we look at it just entirely top down and, like, we're not human, we're just, you know, objects at interacting within the self-organizing system, it's trying to get as much within that system to actually connect and interact and share with that system. I mean, that's all that I guess a startup is. That's all any bit of content going out there, even if it, you're conscious of it or not. Yeah. I think the reason it happens that way is because it's just far more efficient. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't, think, there's, I don't think there's any secret or some no. crazy thing. It's just like top down is literally like really one hard. individual or a group of individuals trying to say this is the best way to do things. Yeah. Whereas bottom up is like people are just saying, well, this is how we use it. So that must be the way it yeah, works. It. So that it must works. be the way we do awesome. things. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it, that's it. It, it. it just works. And I mean, that'll be the, the next big discovery. I mean, you, you always look back on any of the big things, like even the, the new startups. Yeah. They're always something that you just go, wow, that's so freaking basic. I mean, there was a big one recently called um, Airbnb. They uh, got about a billion dollars valuation at the moment. And they're just a new startup. And all it is is kind of like couch surfing, except instead of giving out your place to, for free, you actually charge money. Yeah. And it's such a basic idea, but it's like, that's a, such a better way to organize when I'm visiting a city. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, social media is all bottom up. Oh, yeah, exactly. As well, because the whole theme of it is user generated content. It's like, yeah. That's really all the core of social media is just everyone posting yeah. together and you get this kind of intelligence mm, yeah, that emerges. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that'd be the next stuff I'd like to actually take it from there. That you, you start actually looking at, you know, like AI and what all of that things is, is there. I mean, we speak about it a little bit, but, you know, the idea of AI being in a black box that a rogue scientist has created, I mean, I think it's utter stupidity. Yeah. It's, uh, it's all the, an emergent concept from self organizing systems. Yeah. The AI is just something around. Yeah. And so then we'll start just seeing that even more and more. I mean, even with that whole thing that, you know, like AI is already here, that you can say technology is already going out there. It may not be sentient, but we don't know what sentient is. I mean, all, all, all sentience will be is just a self-organizing system that works really well. I mean, we've nearly broken the Turing test. I'd argue that we have in many ways. Yeah. Uh, and then it just keeps on going out towards the stars, towards everything else. Turn everything else into its system. It keeps on self-organizing. But I don't know what will be the system that actually keeps on self-organizing when you go through that. Because you, you still need that. You can't predict it. Yeah. Because self organizing is what the... Um, and, it's, and I think um, a lot of the things is... Uh, oh, man. like is it like a there's like a threshold kind of factor in terms of yeah. adoption I guess of a new idea so yeah. say you have a group of like say a thousand people you're not going to really get the rest of the group adopting some new idea unless you get say maybe like a hundred people all yeah. using that idea oh god yeah definitely a threshold like there's a, there's a tipping point with anything going there yeah 
But just just in regards to what you're saying, you can't predict it. I, I, I'd, I'd like to say you probably could actually predict it going through because I mean the, the most obvious one for any idea going out there into a self-organizing system is self-preservation, trying to actually keep you know the, the basic thing going the same again and again. Yeah. So that could be like a, a type of thing you could kind of measure. Like the idea of evolution means that you're not killing it off; it just keeps on changing and going through. Because yeah. that'd be a great way to measure is like what self-organized systems are going to work and what ones can't. Because if you could predict that, you could create. Anything. What would you predict it on? What were you saying? Well, I, I, I'm not sure. There, there, there must thinking be a live few... here, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very much thinking live. Not well, pre-thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just say that, like, say, any, any self-organizing system, there has to be some rules that govern it. There has to be some reason why it's actually working within it. If you could actually right. boil it down to the very base and say, this is the reason it's working. I mean, like, obvious one, say, everything all around would be power. Like, you know, getting energy and getting that. And then self-preservation would be another thing. I mean, what what could be some other self? Oh, like the the core, yeah, evolutionary foundations of hive minds, or something yeah, like of, that, of or hive minds, yeah, exactly, of, of a self organizing system. What could be some of the things you could identify? Because then you could identify it within, say, a space, like yeah, the the net. I guess it's really um how quickly they can adapt to ex like stimuli. Really. Yeah, true. Like a new piece of stim. Like think of it like a. Think of like uh, evolution is all based on your environment, yeah. Yeah. So the environment of hive minds is really the information. So you want the external to, information yeah, okay. coming in. So it's kind of like the external information environment. So here's the hive mind. Here's like the rest of the world that's bombarding with all these information. And that happens, that happens with us every day. Well, they and so they're the ones that, are, that can, I guess, best filter out which information is useful to yeah. them. And then which information they can adapt to quick enough. I mean, that's what a company is, isn't it? Exactly. Like you want to get just the most information possible so you can change yeah. and react to that as quick as possible. Yeah. And that's all a self organized Well, is that a self organizing system? That's kind of like the self organizing system within the, the other system. It is if it's bottom up. Yeah. If it's that's not actually I was, was, was going to say, like, that's, 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 essentially what, that's essentially what corporations do, but they still have a top down structure, which is weird. Yeah. They're like, they're, like say, a, a new piece of info, a new competitor comes out in the market. Obviously, if they don't adapt quick enough and well enough, they're going to die. Yeah, exactly. It's very similar. Like a new piece of information that comes in that might be contradictory to their own current yeah. kind of framework in the hive mind. Yeah. If they can react really quickly and incorporate that, like without, you know, emotional qualm and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rejecting it because they have to stick to their... Mm -hmm. That's why I don't like... Sorry, investors, this is our five-year plan. <laughs> that's why I, I don't know if the preservation idea works... Yeah, so you, you know what? Because the idea of preserving, like you're a totally different person, it's you're a totally dangerous. different organism. Yeah, that, that self-preservation may not actually. You want to be in. constantly adapting. Yeah. I also, oh, another thing which could relate to uh, this stuff that mm. we do. Um, a hive mind could go well in, in a bottom-up situation. Again, that that threshold framework. Yeah. But I guess getting getting the information and disseminating it out to all the people within that hive mind quickly and yeah. and kind of uniformly. Yeah, okay. Because you've got no top-down order. Like, say a corporation has a top-down order where it says, they usually say, here's a new piece of information, like the new policy, blah, blah, blah. We're going to be doing this and everyone do that. Yeah. Whereas you don't have that in a hive mind, in a bottom-up system. Yeah. But at the same time, it is probably most efficient if everyone is on the understanding that, hey, here's this new piece of information. Say a policy yeah. comes in, new piece of information. Everyone should currently kind of know that. And this... That, that does happen, I guess, a little bit with the influences that what you were saying before, that people actually naturally, even within a hive mind, still look for others to actually see how it's operating. I mean, a good example of that is, say, well, I, I guess Reddit and say thoughts, things there, that anything that's by a moderator is always like, you know, always at the top things there or any forums or any way that, well, even like, you know, with the CEO and stuff, I mean, anything they say is kind of like, you know, like the gospel, even yeah. though it's just like, it, it's, it's totally imaginary. Yeah. Because I, I think to have, there still needs to be a structure. Yeah, you need a, it. You sort of. That's why I think you, with a lot of the hive mind bottom up stuff, you need some kind of platform that's not necessarily controlled by an individual, but it still gives people that. That's a good way to do it. Then. Still gives people that grounding of like, because if everyone's on the same page, then everyone knows what they're doing. Yeah. But then you still want a, any individual to jump ahead of the curve and do whatever they want. Yeah. If, if they've got it going on. Well, see, that wouldn't be a bad idea for actually for a structure for for a hive mind for a self organizing system to create a backbone to create something that all it does is just keep on perpetuating that self organizing system going through, like say within a company or say a gigantic organization, say like, you know, got 10,000 people in there, yeah. you know, or, or a forum or something going there that, you know, people can actually, if you were just focused on building the backbone and making sure it all worked, and if there was a formula and a procedure to doing that, then you could have one of the strongest um, self-organizing systems. Yeah. Strongest hive minds, strongest group think. Yeah. That'd be pretty good. Well, uh, I, I don't want to mention this, even though it doesn't relate too much. The, um, we're analyzing, uh, we recently, recently had a party, um, 
<laughs> and we had a, had a sumo party, which was epic fun, like sumo suits and fighting yeah. stuff. Yeah. But anyway, um, we have the giant, these giant whiteboards in our house, um, and so we're analyzing them one night because it's been up there for a few days now, and it was funny when we were analyzing them because on the night I don't think we were actually too much in the house playing that game. There's a whole bunch of people. There's probably about what, what was the game? Thirty or forty people. Okay. No, 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 I, I'll lead up to it, because oh, okay, because enough. the whole thing is the game, we kind of interpreted ourselves, and, mm. and understood it very succinctly, like, very quickly, which is interesting. Um, so anyway, they, yeah, I'll explain. There were a whole bunch of people in the, in, the, in the living room drawing on the whiteboard, and they started off with one word, just masturbation. And then what they were doing underneath, and I, I had not played this, I had not been told the rules at all, we just came in, like, a, a day afterward and looked at the board and, like, what the fuck, and instantly you're kind of like, oh, that's what they were doing. Mm. They will then... A whole bunch of list of words underneath that were like trying to take any of the letters within the word masturbation to make a new word, like so bait, um, saturation, bait. stuff like that, tits, you know, <laughs> in, in typical funny fashion. But um, the interesting thing, the way we analyze that is that's kind of like um, there's a kind of group cohesion type model there. There's there's that's, there's a hive mind in itself. It's a bottom it up is. ordering. It's people actually coming up with a game on the fly and putting it in onto this kind of. It's it's like a, it's like cave drawings actually. It's like it's like there's a cave drawing and everyone kind of understands what that is on the wall and what's happening. And the fact that we saw that had not played the game, had not been told the rules by anyone, and just picked it up instantly. That is the perfect form of bottom up ordering. Yeah, it is because we see it. We saw the patterns instantly, recognize those patterns. And that was the other interesting thing. Like take to the nth degree, those letters mean nothing. They're just scribbles. Yeah, they, they mean stuff to us because we understand that that's an A, that's a T. Yeah. That means this, combine them together, that means that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah anyway, it just doesn't mean anything. It's where we just saw, like, self-organizing system firsthand. Yeah, yeah I just, I know, and it's... Just it, random, like, like, no yeah. one put any rules in, no one actually said, hey, this is what's going to happen. Yeah, there's just no... a thing on a whiteboard as people walked by, they were like, hey, and then they put their own word up. There's, there's something there, I haven't, there's some more analyzation there to do, because yeah. the fact that we, there's no rules written there, there's no, I was, no. we were not involved in the game at all, so no. we had no idea what happened, just saw it the day after, you're kind of, like you said, like we're like archaeologists kind of looking into what these yeah, people yeah, exactly. were doing last night. So like, okay, this, this organization has happened and why? What, what happened yeah. here? And then we and worked then out the rules. We instantly picked up what the game was and I started thinking instantly like, oh, which, which words have they, have they missed? Yeah, yeah. Are there any words that, that they've missed? Oh, I want to add one. Yeah. And that's, that's a self-organizing system. It is. That's, and it's spurring us to want to play this game with these made-up rules in this whole made-up system that... Completely bottom up. It's crazy. It's probably one person just had an idea, like, oh, I'll put the word masturbation, and the other people and like, oh, just say, right. came and do it. I mean, we saw it from just the ground up, and now we're doing it with millions, if not billions, of people all at once. Yeah. And so that's how we're creating the world. Yeah. Ooh, and the other interesting thing, just one last thing. I, okay. I wrote down notes because. Uh, um, there's. Have you seen those cool mouse tracking things where you like you? Uh, it's a little app called like IO something. Right. There's a bunch out there, but it, it tracks all your mouse movements and clicks. And I was thinking that um, that's a pr as pr cool people like ah oh, that's art that's nice and stuff, but maybe there's actually some pattern recognition there. Whereas if you were if you recorded that non-stop, and then did some kind of analysis on it, like worked out where the individual points were and where it moved, rather than just here's a pretty picture, maybe you could actually create a mouse movement clicking algorithm for you. You said like yeah. a ma like a macro for you. Yeah. <laughs> so you go back in, press play, and you know what they're going to click on next. Yeah, it can start following you and start going, oh, no, now 66% likely to yeah. click here or meant to click there. And, yeah. Given it's scary. <laughs> given the context of what program is open. But we were saying before, like, you know, you, you see it in that fashion. It's not like a button really means nothing. That's a, we, we have this abstract concept that a button means you move this little point of light that's yeah. a different color. You hit a physical little button and that point of light changes into something yeah. else. Which then brings up different light patterns. Just glowing rectangles, I mean, how many? <laughs> anyway, so I've been busy <laughs> rambling. That's great. Right. Yeah. Anyway, we'll uh, catch you next week. And we, what were we going to do next week? There was an important one. We'll look through. <laughs> anyway, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll catch you then. I've been uh, Tristan Grace. I've been Nathan I've been... There you go. <laughs> See you later. Bye.